Hello, this is Rabbi Lisa Malik from Temple Beth Am of Aberdeen, New Jersey. In addition to the full recording of the Yisker service that was recorded earlier today, I also wanted to make this recording of my pre Yisker remarks. They were not recorded as part of the Zoom meeting. Today is Tuesday, April 14th. It is the 20th of Nisan, Chol HaMoed Pesach. And tonight we will be lighting candles for the seventh night of Pesach. Shneimasar elef zugim tamidim hayulo le Rabbi Akiva. In Masechet Yevamot, the Talmud relates that 24,000 of Rabbi Akiva's students died of the plague during the first 32 days of the seven week Omer counting period between Passover and Shavuot. This is quite an uncanny thought as the death totals from COVID-19 approach that number. One of the many tragedies of the coronavirus is that people who are dying are often treated as statistics, not as individuals. This tendency is something we try to counteract every year in our commemoration of Yom HaShoah. When we remember the six million we refer to that statistic in order to convey the enormous magnitude of the Holocaust. But we are also encouraged to recite the names and tell the stories of those who were murdered as a way of honoring their memory as individuals. Just last week on Erev Pesach, there was an article in the Jerusalem Post suggesting that as we approach Yom HaShoah, and prepare to honor the memories of the individuals who perished at the hands of the Nazis and their collaborators. We should also consider honoring the memories of the individuals who have been stricken by COVID-19. Lehavdil, in no way does this article suggest, chas v'chalila, God forbid, that we equate a calculated plan of genocide by inhumane human beings with the current global health crisis but it is a means of encouraging the sharing of individuals' names and stories, lest they be forgotten in all of the reports of numbers of deaths. The Jerusalem Post launched a program that they are referring to as the Yiskor Project, and it is a platform for sharing the stories of the people lost to the coronavirus, to learn about them, who they were, what they achieved in life, and what they left behind. It is a space to memorialize them and to remember them as individuals. Everyone is invited to fill out a form that's on the Jerusalem Post website and to share the story of a loved one who died of the coronavirus. As you may know, two of the individuals from Temple Beth Am community who just died of the coronavirus are Gloria Tepper, Zichron Ali Racha, and Edith Ritz, Zichron Ali Racha. Gloria's funeral was yesterday, and Edith's was the day before. These losses were especially tragic for Gloria's and Edith's family and friends, as well as for all families and friends of individuals who have died during this pandemic, because the social distancing rules are preventing people from mourning their loved ones with traditional funerals, shiva, or Kaddish rituals. And for people whose loved ones died in the recent or not so recent past, the need to shelter in place and the mandate for synagogues to remain closed prevents us from attending a Yisker service in person this Passover. But there is something that I would like to tell you, or maybe remind you of if you already know. The essence of Yisker can still be accomplished this year despite the global pandemic. Because the primary purpose of Yisker is to honor our loved ones by committing to give tzedakah in their memory. This tradition is based on the idea that the good deeds of the surviving family members elevate the souls of the de departed. The core text of the Yisker service, in fact, is a pledge to give tzedakah. And we can do that, even though we are not able to gather together in the same physical space as each other, in the same room as the memorial plaques that bear our loved ones' names and your site dates. Even though we are unable to daven together in the TBA sanctuary this year, we were still able to gather together in this virtual minion space. 
and we are still able to pledge to give tzedakah in our loved one's memory while expressing our hope that their souls rest in peace under God's divine protection. As we pledge to give tzedakah and to devote ourselves to perpetuating the values that our loved ones held so dearly, Yiskar provides us with the opportunity to pause and reflect upon the memory of the individuals we loved, who loved us, who are no longer with us. Of course, this year's Yiskar is going to be very different than all other Yiskars, just as this Passover was different than all other Passovers that we have ever experienced. But this year, 5780, may be the most powerful Yiskar ever. With death all around us, with the angel of death, the Malach HaMavet, hovering overhead, we are especially aware of the fragility of life. And because we feel so socially isolated during this period of confinement, we may feel the painful absence of our loved ones even more acutely than we would under normal circumstances. As I muster my own strength to say Yisker for my father for the first time, I remind myself, just as I am reminding you, that even after death and burial, only the body is buried. The memories, values, and legacies of our loved ones remain with us forever as we remember them. Now going to read out loud the names of the members of the Temple Beth Am community and their loved ones who died between last Passover and this Passover. We remember Seymour Shapiro, father of Monica Hirsch, Sheila Schindel, sister of Esther Bressler, Elaine Rosenthal, aunt of Mark Rosenthal and Carol Toth, Rona Lee Berebi, sister of Janice Arbital, Carol Benaroff, mother of Barbara Safer, Joel Levy, former president of TBA, husband of Janet Levy, Rita Broder, former TBA member, Sandra Zelda Leibowitz, sister of Brenda Leibowitz, Charles Chuck Sandler, father of Scott Sandler, Maxwell Wolf, father of Dr. David Wolf, Seth Kogan, son-in-law of Bob and Naomi Blum, Marty Fishman, son of Gary and Geraldine Fishman, Gerald Mayer, cousin of Benita Brokaw, my father, David Malik, Betty Spector, cousin of Madeline Gable, Louis Facone, brother of Jen Smith, Marilyn Friedman, mother of Rona Freed, Rivka Defrin, mother of Hanna Godrich, Bernard Domanski, husband of Shelley Domanski, Stuart Algava, brother of Al Algava, Morty Silverman, husband of Marsha Silverman, Joan Miller, past president of Ohav Shalom and member of the TBA board, Sylvia Shornstein, mother of Howard Shornstein, Marsha Lilienthal, aunt of Brian Lilienthal, Francine Lipnick, mother of Laura Goldwasser, Arlene Silver, mother of Scott Silver, Maxwell Cooperman, longtime member of TBA, Jay Morgenstern, husband of Ellen Morgenstern, former president and head of the ritual committee, Al Kogan, father of Ellie Rosenthal, Ruth Malamed Edlin, mother of Dale Edlin, Ethel Kashuk, mother of Martha DeSanto, Bella Domanski, mother-in-law of Shelley Domanski, Shirley Levine, cousin of Janice Arbital, Jenya Litwak, mother-in-law of Maura Narit Litwak, Sandra Miriam Warhaftig Garb, mother of Randy Goldberg, Barbara Teplitz, aunt of Jay Olarsh, Trudy Mark, wife of Murray Mark, Edith Ritz, wife of Jerry Ritz, Gloria Tepper, mother of Patricia Lapierre, Lloyd Howard, husband of Sandra Howard. May their memories be for a blessing.
is kahar Elohim. Et nishmot yedidenu chavrei hakahal hakadosh hazeh shehachu liolamam. Ana tihien hanafshotehem tzurot bitzor hachayim. Utihihi menuchatam kavod. So was a machor panechani neimot bimilchanetzach. Amen. May God remember the souls of our friends, members of this holy congregation, who have gone to their eternal home. May their souls be bound up in the bond of life. May they rest in peace, honored in God's presence. Exalted, compassionate God, comfort the bereaved families of this congregation. Help us to perpetuate everything that was worthy in the lives of those no longer with us, whom we remember this day. May their memory endure as a blessing. Amen. El male rachamim, shochen bamaromim, hamtsem nucha nechona, tachat kanfei hashechina, bimalot kedoshimu tehorim, kezohar harakia mazirim, lenishmot, Kol ehle shehis karnu hayom li racha, shahachu li olamam, bikane denti menuchatam. Ana bach rachamim, hasti remeseter kenafecha li olamim, utzeror bitzror hachayim, et nishmotehem adunai hu nachalatam. V'yanuchu v'shalom al mishkevotehem v'nomar Amen. Exalted, compassionate God, grant perfect peace in your sheltering presence among the holy and the pure, whose radiance is like the heavens, to the souls of all those we have recalled today. May their memory be for a blessing, and may they rest in paradise. Master of mercy, may they find eternal shelter beneath your sheltering wings, and may their souls be bound up in the bond of life. Hashem is their portion. May they rest in peace, and let us say, Amen. And now for my concluding comments from the Yisker service. According to rabbinic tradition, the seventh day of Passover is the day when the great miracle of Kriyat Yamsuf, the splitting of the Sea of Reeds, took place, followed immediately by the singing of Shirat Hayam, the Song of the Sea. Shvi'i shel Pesach, hu hayom she'alav karaha nesagadol shel Kriyat Yamsuf, uv'ikvotav Shirat Hayam. A Midrash teaches, Shahabriya lo nishlema ad she'bnei Yisrael patchu b'Shirat Hayam that the emergence of B'nai Israel as a free people was not completed until they burst out in song, demonstrating their faith in God during a time of crisis by singing Shirat Hayam. Tomorrow, on the seventh day of Pesach, I encourage every one of us alone in our individual homes to sing Shirat Hayam together at 10.45 a.m. at around the same time when we would have been hearing the Shira chanted from the Torah at Temple Beth Am. You can find Shirat Hayam in the book of Exodus, Shemot, chapter 15. Although we won't be singing this song together in a physical sense, I pray that we will be together in spirit as we sing the Song of the Sea in unison tomorrow morning. Bezrat Hashem, with God's help, in partnership with the doctors, nurses, other healthcare workers, researchers, and medical equipment suppliers, May we have the zechut, the merit, to be able to sing to the Kadosh Baruch Hu together in person, in shul, speedily, and in our day, bimhe rabbi amenu, when we are liberated from this health crisis. May it be Hashem's will that we experience the wonder of being liberated from the plague of COVID-19 as soon as possible, ba'agalav vizman kariv, just as our ancestors experienced wonders in the days of Yitziat Mitzrayim, the exodus from Egypt. Can you hear Chag Sameach.